We're glad to have you back. Now, the CBN's decision to raise the monetary policy rates to 24.75% has continued to generate conversations on its implications for economic stability, inflation management, and growth prospects. Well, according to the CBN, the decision to adjust the NPR reflects its efforts to stimulate economic growth and manage inflationary pressure in Nigeria. Meanwhile, in what looks like a complimentary gesture from the fiscal side, President Bola Hamed Tinumbu has appointed, uh, proved, I beg your pardon, the establishment of the Presidential Economic Coordination Council and the creation of Economic Management Team Emergency Tax Force to formulate and implement a consolidated emergency economic plan towards achieving economic resilience and growth. For more perspective on this, I introduced him earlier. He's joining me for, from Johannesburg in South Africa. He is a partner, tax and reporting, tax reporting and strategy. Prize water house coopers, Mr. Kenneth Erikume, a friend of the house. Thank you so much. It's good to see you. Nice to see you as well, Tolu, and looking forward to our chat. Yes, I think I should start this way, Mr. Ken, because I would have said, what were you expecting from Dr. Cardoso after that meeting? That's the second meeting for this year. Well, while you can also take that, some economists have argued that increasing rates like this, 400 basis points, 200 basis points, might not really work for Nigeria, might not work for Nigeria, considering our peculiarities and the kind of inflation that we face. How does this come to you? How would you make us understand all of this? Thank you very much, Tolu. Um, I have to be honest with you. I didn't expect that, you know, there'll be an increase of NPR by 200 basis points mm -hmm. after that um, significant increase that happened earlier. And I think that increase, based on history, was the highest in uh, the 1970s. So to be honest, I wasn't really expecting that um, interest rates would increase um, subsequently. So just like everyone else, um, I, was a bit, um, I was a bit shocked. But um, is it altogether... Um, you know, on, you know, illogical, I would say no, um, because the reality is that if you apply a policy and it results in some positive results, you know, like they say, um, you know, depending on the sort of um, situation you find yourself, drastic situations cause for drastic measures. So it's not um, illogical that if you've applied some policy and you're seeing, you know, a positive result, that you sort of employ it further. Mr. Rikume, are you there? Well, um, let me say that references to the actions that have. Uh, yes, I'm here. Go I'm ahead. Here. Go ahead. Me? Go ahead. Some network issues there. So, Go ahead. Yeah. So if I pick myself. Um, as an example, you know, the last time I came on this show, um, I mentioned to you that I was going to cut down on my loans. Um, and, I, and I did that. I paid back the bank a significant portion of my personal loan. Um, but then there was an asset financing I needed to do. And I was thinking about getting uh, an, a top up on my loan. But once I got this news, uh, while I was out there in Mauritius for a board meeting, um, I totally changed my plans. And that's what's going to happen, not just on a personal level, but across the country. But if I, before, I, you know, before I tackle you know, the impact on various sectors, um, let me address the peculiarities of the inflation um, situation in Nigeria. Um, 30 percent and, and could go higher. higher. Uh, and the reality is that um, you know if you apply these sort of measures in in a country where the disposable income of the general population is quite high, then you know you, you, you're not totally out of um, sync with, with reality because then you know like we see in the US, the middle class and the upper middle class, because it's now an employer employee's market, they're earning 
quite much more than before. And therefore, um, you need to mop up some of the excess funds so that it goes into savings. But from a Nigerian perspective, the disposable income of most Nigerians is already very low. Uh, many Nigerians spend more on food than their income. Um, and therefore, what you're, you know, when you employ this sort of measure, it's going to have a ripple effect on the most vulnerable population. Um, and these are the micro, small, and medium enterprises that would require funding. And they're already borrowing at a very high rate in order to meet up with the obligations. Uh, but, you know, the big picture is that in the more strategic areas, especially at the um, you know, try to mop up as much as possible, um, you know, claw back some of their non-performing loans, and of course, put their investments, in, you know, invest their monies more into um, stable investments that they believe they'll be able to recover from. So the measures at a strategic, maybe at the you know macro level, would achieve its purpose. But a lot of businesses, especially in the small, medium, and micro levels, will be significantly exposed, um, and that would have a ripple effect on everything, including you know the non-performing loans that we rec recognize in sector. Um, as well as the real sector of the economy, especially for manufacturers and the telcos, um, who are already grappling with headwinds in terms of forex, that they would de therefore be contending with other challenges like the um, interest rates, um, which would force them to begin to look at their capital. and their financing on how they would be. So to that extent, um, I think that Wow. Mr. Kenneth Erikume. Short term, these measures make sense for the poor and the most vulnerable. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. All right, good. Okay, so, uh, achieving sustainable growth uh, in 2024 is something that government is pursuing, we can see. Uh, and before I wrapped up my first conversation, um, Dr. Nevin mentioned the committee uh, just formed by, by the president that's uh, focusing on coordinating uh, economic and emergency moves and all of that. And so I, I want to ask you what you make of the, that move by Mr. President and how you think that can help uh, address all of this. The likes of Tony Elumelu, the, 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 all, of, all of the Mr. Kola Balogu, all of the, they are all on, on this list. And we also have government functionaries on this list. W any quick wings for government at this time? Um, so, Tolu, um, first of all, when I got the news yesterday of the formation of this council, um, I had a bit, you know, one or two questions, which I then sat down to sort of resolve. The first one was, was what is the situation for the National Economic Council? Mm. And this debate, I've heard a few people raise it um, recently. Uh, around is there no duplication between the Presidential Economic Coordination Council and the National Economic Council. Um, but I think that that question can be resolved very easily because the NEC is a construct of the Constitution, but their role is limited to advisory. Um, it doesn't specify for the advice to be adopt coordination and implementation of a plan. So since this administration um, came on board, um, you know, the president quickly, um, you know, set up the NEC under his administration. But over time, we've seen that there is no clear strategy um, and coordination of that strategy from an economic perspective. So in the past, we've had the economic recovery growth plan, if you remember, and then 
you know, during COVID and after COVID, we had the Nigerian Economic Sustainability Plan. So we need a clear plan and strategy for the country. You know, that's number one. Um, and that strategy has to um, sit on what we want to be playing with, what is at the core of Nigeria, what must we, you know, what area do we want to play and how do we want to play? You know, um, when you look at the pillars of our economy, what are we doing for gas? In the agri space, our neighbors, Ghana, um, is, used to be number one. Another of our neighbor is number one, and that's Ivory Coast. What are we doing with the likes of cocoa? What are we doing with our, you know, teeming youthful population in terms of outsourcing? What are we doing with diaspora? as well as the creative industry, which has been very um, attractive globally. So we need to look at areas where we can create, enhance value, and retain value. And not just for now, but sustainably. So that strategic plan, I believe, is what the, um, you know, the Presidential Economic Coordination Council would be doing over the long term. Um, and the, the plan would cover things around um, employment, inflation control, balance of payments, income distribution, sustainability, and all those key parameters. Um, but after planning, there also has to be coordination. And I think for me, this is where the new com you know, council that the president has formed can create quick wins. Because in, you know, in the recent past, we've seen a lot of lack of coordination. Um, and I think this is what the president is trying to address. So if I pick the example of the expatriate employment levy, on the one hand, we're trying to, we were trying to attract foreign direct investment. But on the other hand, we were coming up with an expatriate you know, employment levy of $10,000 to $15,000 per expatriate. You know, that was counterproductive because all the multinationals that would want to invest, they would obviously want to send in their expatriates so that they, you know, those expatriates can watch over and deliver their investment. Um, and then, you know, something as basic as payment of tax. You know, in the tax law, it says you pay your tax in the currency of transaction. But then, on the other hand, you want to encourage people to patronize the um, I&E window and all the official channels of government. But if, if someone um, is then forced to the parallel market to source for FX to pay taxes, that's a lack of coordination. And even other things around diversification of the economy, when we talk about incentives for backward integration, um, and then you're encouraging people to export. But when they get to the port, there is so much bureaucracy to get the items out. That's lack of coordination. So you need to have that model where you're bringing, you know, all the critical stakeholders in the economy, the central bank, the Ministry of Finance, customs, immigration, and everybody's coming on that one um, to deliver the strategy which government comes up with. So for me, I'm expecting a big win from that perspective, because that's an area where I believe the government can move the dial significantly. But, you know, these two aspects will not deliver the outcome. So on the one hand, we talk about the strategic plan, and that's right, every country must have a plan. If you look at the you know what they are about education, they want finance, uh, and that's their, their long-term plan. When you look at, at China, they invested heavily on education, on infrastructure, um, and a whole lot of, um, you know, um, um, in, you know investments around opening up their economy for foreign investments, and that is their strategy. So we, we also need to come up with our strategy and implement it. But the plan and the coordination is not enough. What you then need, and imagine Tolu, 
Nigeria's problem has never been the lack of committees mm. or the lack of planning, mm. right? Um, we, we are very good, you know, we are very good on putting together white papers and, and templates and strategic documents. But usually the big challenge is the tactical and operational execution mm. of that plan. Mm. And historically, the public sector has not been um, the, the best um, player to deliver that value. You know, and that's why I, I am happy that they're bringing the private sector and people who have delivered massive value in industry and in the private sector to be part of these committees. Um, but we need to take out bureaucracy in execution. We need to take out corruption. And we need um, like an emergency room where um, there's an operations um, manager holding the pen and delivering that strategic plan across board. And these were some of the challenges we saw around the ERGP and the uh, National Emergency Sustainability Plan uh, and all the other plans that Nigeria has had. The lack of precise and controlled execution. Um, without that, these committees would, would fail. Yeah. Hmm. I, 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 interesting. Uh, stuff. One, one thing is clear, government needs revenue and they are ambitious about it to fund the 2024 budget, uh, which is, of course, part of what the fiscal side needs to do to complement the monetary side, proper implementation of budget. But my question really for you would be, what, the expectations from non-oil and oil sector, uh, do you see it coming as expected? I hope we are not just... Uh, I hope are getting too high. I hope we are not um, over-projecting. Let me use that word. Um, so, Tolu, I, I think that we, we are not over-projecting for several reasons. The first one is that there is a natural um, inflation dimension yeah. to, the, to the revenue target, right? So, if you think about the cost of bread, in and I'm talking about the big loaf of bread in January 2022, it was about 400 naira. Um, today, I buy a loaf of bread um, at the shops at 1,600, 1,700. So the um, the cost of goods and services. Again, network. Yeah. I think we have Mr. Well, Rikome back. Go ahead, please. Go ahead. Wow. Wow. Very interesting uh, question there. Uh, talking about expectations from the non-oil and, of course, the oil space as we move on. Government tries to diversify its economy and um, moving away from oil. How feasible is this? Mr. Rikume, are you there? All right, then I think we'll just um, wrap up that uh, conversation uh, there. Interestingly, we're able to make sense of the little time we had with Mr. Rikume. We apologize for the challenges there. Uh, Mr. Uh, Kenneth Rikume's partner, Tax Reporting and Strategy with Price Waterhouse Coopers. He joined us from South Africa. Let's take a break. When we come back, 